Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, not so much tactical, but it does have tactical applications. And that is positional shooting. I'm not going to go over all these different positions, but basically what I'm doing today. Um, right now I've got a target, steel target, 8 inch by 8 inch, out at oh, 100-ish yards. I still haven't lasered it yet, but I'm backed up into the woods here. The target is down <clears throat> in the low ground by a little marshy area up here in the mountains. And what we're going to do is do some positional shooting. I'm going to be shooting off the pack, off of trees, whatever I can. I've got scrub brush around me, very similar to this right here. So I've got to be able to get a little bit of elevation. And my 9 inch tripod, or a bipod rather, was not good enough to get me over that stuff. This so I'm going to use backpack like I said. Um, today I'm shooting couple different rifles. First one I'm going to start with is Ruger American Predator. Um, nothing big about it. I got a 10 round mag. Bushnell Engage 2.5 to 10 with the Deploy MOA reticle. Um, if you haven't seen these scopes you should really check them out. I don't even know if you can get them anymore but they came with push-pull turrets. I think that chipmunk's mad at me. <laughs> push-pull turrets so it's locked in does not have a zero stop but it's this is a very useful scope I've had it for a few years now taking a lot of game with it but 18 inch barrel shooting 178 grain eldx 165 boat tail soft point from spear and 180 grain boat tail soft point from spear and a cheek piece from matthews fabrication you have to drill through the stock to put it on there but it's got these knobs really nice um, I've been through a lot of bolt action rifles. They were either too heavy, not accurate enough, or whatever. This is a good middle of the road. I get uh, sub-inch groups 99.9% .9 of the time as long as I don't change too much of the ammo. And the other thing I get is um, moderately lightweight, fully set up just like you see here. I'm right at nine pounds, so it's not that bad. And so with that, I'm gonna get set up here and go over what I'm going to be doing as far as shooting positions but first I'm going to engage off of my backpack which is the Eberly stock F1 mainframe with the F5 switch blade attached to it with the hookup kit and so I'm going to leave you for a second here get all set up get my earplugs in take care of safety stuff make sure that my background is safe and all that I have already checked it but I'm gonna give it a minute there's nobody camping in the area tonight it was cold it's still 34 degrees right now and it's, you know, middle of May. But when you're up in the mountains, that's what you have to deal with. So I'll leave you with that and be back in just a second so we can start engaging some targets. All right, so as I get set up here, um, I've got my pack facing out um, for no particular reason other than this has an L-shaped frame in it and it's facing out right now. And I can push against it a little bit as I stabilize. It's not super stable but I should be able to stabilize behind it fairly well. And so I'll try it this way and I'll try it the other way just to make sure it's what I want. And with that, make sure my earplugs are in good. So right now, I'm five months out from rifle season. Right now is the time to make sure that I can get stable. I can make the shot off the backpack, off the tree, things like that. So let's get to it. And I'm not going to waste your time with, uh, hey, I'm going to take five shots from the backpack. If I, if I make a good hit and it felt good and I felt stable, I'm going to move back somewhere else, try a different position. So here we go. That was uh, most definitely a hit. And so with that, I always double check because all my, all my shots are reloads. I always double check them, but eh, no swipe marks, nothing like that. So I got a just left of center hit off a backpack. I haven't shot off a backpack in over a year. And so uh, this is why you got to get out and practice, make sure that you understand your craft, whether it's for a defensive nature, the tactical side, whether it's for a humane nature, for the hunting, um, 
or just being a better marksman, a better rifleman. And so with that, we're gonna move back and I'm gonna change positions, change up how we're doing this and see how that goes. All right, so I found another position. I've got whatever I'm shooting at directly ahead of me. I've only moved back about 20 yards. One of the things I like to do if I'm not using my pack is still put it down in front of me because it'll mask some of my movement. I have a small dead branch coming off the tree right here and I'm gonna use that and find the most stable position I can to get a shot on that target. So with that, There we go. And that was a miss. And so, good lesson there. I was still a little wobbly here and I should have locked it in a little tighter. So we're gonna try that one more time. That was definitely a hit, and if that had been a game animal, that would have definitely been a kill shot. So we're gonna try another position. All right, so now we're gonna try a standing shot from thin trees. Um, and you need to keep in mind, these trees move, and so even though this one is that big around, it can move. This one can definitely move, and this is what I'm gonna be bracing myself off of. I'm at about 9,900 yards and I have some obstructions. So I have to be very careful where I shoot and very careful about how I brace myself. If you move the tree that's supporting you, make sure you give it time to settle down, if you can. Just over the top. I don't drop my brass. <laughs> and that was a hit. I definitely felt the difference between those two shots when I took them. I knew the second I let go on that second shot that it was going to hit. I also knew on that first shot from that standing position that I missed. And so be aware of those things. As you become a better shooter, rifleman, marksman, you'll understand those things and you'll be able to feel the difference. And that's about the best way to describe it. You can feel the difference. All right, so we're at 180 yards and I have some brush like this that's out here in front of me and so with this shot I'm going to be practicing you know finding a window finding my shooting window and so it's going to be difficult because honestly the the target was yellow and I see it right there it was yellow now it's all gray from shooting it and so with that we're going to see if we can get a good position and a good shot and I think I found a window already and so you may have to use your knee or your leg up under part of your pack or something like that to help stabilize it and so just be aware of those situational changes that you need to make And that was a hit. I did forget to mention, so we're at 180 yards, that's a 1.3 MOA up um, adjustment. However, um, the target at this distance is, if I can find it, there it is. It's five MOA, so it's not that big of a deal if you don't adjust, but you gotta know that stuff about your loads, your, your ammo, the drops at certain distances, and you can only do that at getting out here and testing. And so, Looking through here, I had a window about this big. 
cantaloupe size through some, uh, some of this brush to make that shot and I successfully engaged that target. This would be ideal for concealment, all right? Concealment is masking your movement, masking your appearance to something that you don't want to see you. It is not cover if you are in a defensive position. There is nothing in front of me that's gonna stop a barrage of gunfire. And so keep that in mind. I wanna check that target one more time to make sure I can still find it, there it is. And so, um, Get out there, I'm gonna make some more shots. I'm not gonna bore you with any more unless I get something really crazy, a uh, crazy shooting position or something, but in a little bit I'm gonna be switching to the Grindle, the AR-15 platform, and we'll show you a few of those. All right, I, uh, I found that strange shooting position for you, so I'm back with the bolt action. And so I'm on a rock, and that could present a few problems. Number one, it's extremely uncomfortable. It's granite, it's sharp. All the edges, there's nothing smooth on this. It's pretty sharp. But the problem I run into isn't that, that, I can endure that. It's that I have a metal framed pack. And so if I were to throw it on the back, as in flipping this pack over, that frame, although it is covered, it's gonna make more noise. And so I flipped it over, put it on the soft side, but between the back support and the lumbar support, there's a slit right here that I can rest that rifle in and it's super secure. And right now we've got the target at 275 yards which is three and a half MOA. away. Um, I'm not gonna dial it. I wanna hold this and see what happens. I didn't hear it, but it was moving. And I'm gonna double check my dope in my phone. Generally also, I'm out here getting my dope, which is data on previous engagement. It tells me how far I'm shooting and the drop and all that good stuff and how to adjust the scope. And the one I use has this reticle in it. And so it says 3.4. I'm gonna dial it just in case. And these are quarter MOA subtensions. So I'm gonna go three and a half. I'm gonna push it back down and lock it. The good thing about this rock being sharp, I'm pushing really hard on this rock and there's and it's sloped up. And I can really push and get a good strong hold on this. I don't think I hit that. And so I'm at about 275-ish. Three and a half in my way. Always make sure that round goes in because that did not go in. And if an animal hears that click, they're out. So. This is also the uh, hard part is if you don't have somebody spotting you and you're not super stable and you can't see your shots, then you're done. Not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure I hit that. I can't tell. Um, if I'm not hitting it, I'm not seeing any uh, dirt or anything splash up behind it. And I'm not straight on target, but I'm back on it really fast. So, I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell in the video a little bit better than me. So with... So just finished up with the 308. Heading back to the vehicle to go get my Grindle. Um, <clears throat> problem I was running into, it definitely isn't accuracy. Um, I practice a lot. Um, definitely made reliable hits with this thing pretty dang far out. But what I'm running into out here is accuracy with the, the rangefinder. The rangefinder is great. It's the uh, Vortex Razor 4000, um, but it can only aim or it can only laze and give you a distance to which you aim it at. And it's not real stable, there's a lot of tall grass, and so I think my, my ranging is off. So if you have an elk or something like that that you're ranging, 
then you're definitely going to have a bigger target. I'm on a, a picket, a, a T-post, steel T-post with an 8 inch target so you're not going to be able to laze that necessarily um, at you know 280 yards and so I caught Trace on my last shot out there. Um, I was going just over the top right corner. Um, would have been a kill shot. I do aim so that if I have a margin of error that I'm covered on big game. Deer, um, I probably needed to make sure if I was shooting at deer on that shot on those shots that I had a better lays because they're much smaller. But with elk, I would have definitely been good. Drilled the uh, 310 and then moved out to where it was 400 yard silhouette steel target straight in the chest. And so the rifle's on again out here working on positional shooting because that's where the money is. Um, <clears throat> I've been really lucky in my uh, hunting experiences that, heck, I took a elk standing at 40 yards, and that is my longest elk shot. And so I've been lucky at that, in that, but also skilled because I think that getting close to animals and being able to track and know where they're going to be is an art, and I uh, haven't perfected it. I'm just getting better at it. And my longest bow kill out of three is eight yards. And so uh, I got elk pretty much kissing those arrows before they before they get taken. So I'm going to switch over to my Grindle and quit recording because nobody wants to hear me talk anymore. And with that, I will leave you guys until I get set up. All right, so now we're out here. I'm going to use different shooting positions, locations, things like that, just to vary it up. Um, but now I'm shooting the AR-15 in 6.5 Grindle. And if you've seen my other videos, I had some double, double firing issues. I've since changed the trigger. I've got about a five pound trigger in this with a, a much longer reset, heavier reset. And so test fired it, no double shots. Um, not trying to machine gun an elk or a, or a deer or an antelope or anything, but um, Palmetto State Armory upper, I don't think this is a high quality uh, Harris bipod, but it's been working for about five years for me, so whatever. Bushnell Nitro, four to 16 by 44. First focal plane, so I do have a Christmas tree reticle, all that good stuff. And then everything else is the same. And with that, we're gonna get this party started. And so this already, because of my shooting position right now, the, I'm sitting lower than I was when we shot the other rifle, so I have to adjust and lean it back a little bit. And so you have to adjust a little bit sometimes. You may have to, you know, cross your legs over, you know, whatever, and without getting caught in the stuff. Oh, this will work. So I'm bracing it now. And this is nice to have this bipod in here because I can use that as a brace. Easy shot, very stable, felt good. And so we'll get moved back and push it out to about 150, almost 200 on this next one um, because I'm just so much more familiar with this platform. Um, I love bolt actions, don't get me wrong. They have their purpose and they're much more accurate generally than um, semi-autos. But I have so many years behind an AR style rifle, an M4, an M16, that this is just a little bit more second nature to me and so with that that's why i'm going to move back a little bit further and so join me back there if you will all right so one of the considerations when you're shooting off of objects such as a down tree is its motion and so i wedge my backpack under this stick it's sticking down this is moving about a third of what it was and so we're almost at 200 yards and i'm gonna plug the data in um, just because I'm not accustomed to this Grindle yet. So let's see here. Calculate. I'm only ha at a half a mil MRAD. And so that's not really that much of an adjustment. Um, and I'm going to crank it up to about 12 or so. What I can also do, I can stabilize by grabbing the forend here. Wrapping my hand around the branch or holding down on the main part of this and then resting my elbow on there. 
undid the pack. And I can also push the rifle forward. There we go. And so, as you see, I am not sitting, so I don't have a really super stable platform. But I think we might be able to make this work. So, if you can find your target. There we go. So we're only half a mil. I do have half a mil subtensions in this scope, but I'm not going to use it. Um, it's, you know, a third of the target, so it's not really that big of a deal. That was a hit. That really actually felt easy. And so if you're, if you're getting the hits, and I'm more worried about my brass and where it went. <laughs> if you're more worried about the hits um, than you are with your stable platform, then you're not going to get your hit. All right? And so make sure you got a stable platform. Make sure you're good. Um, if you can't be 100% stable, you'll notice that you kind of go in a pattern. Sometimes it's up and down. Sometimes it's side to side. Let it happen. Don't fight it. So on the target, off the target, on the target, off the target, on the target, boom. You know, as long as it's not fast and you can control that, uh, you'll be able to make a good ethical shot on a game animal, a target, a defensive situation, whatever the case may be, and that'll help you become a better marksman. All right, so I didn't get much further back, but I wanted to try to take this shot. I'm at excuse me 240 yards and as you can see I'm at an incline steep downhill incline and I don't even know if I can get this low on my scope I'm not super stable because the pack wants to rock but what I can do is grab the frame with this hand and pull it down and hold it and I've got the bipod used as leverage to kind of wedge the rifle down on here and so let me see if I can even get on target here yeah and it's actually, it's actually fairly stable. And so with this nitro scope, I don't dial. I've got capped turrets. Um, I've got a great reticle. And so let me get the parallax set. All right, I've got good view of my target. I do have a narrow shooting window and this is really awkward. So <laughs> here we go. Pro tip, don't lose your target. And it helps to put it on fire. That was a hit. And so, ugh, get out. Like I said, get these get these weird angled shots. Like as you can see, I'm higher up here than I am down here, and this is super awkward. Um, it kinks your neck. You don't have it shouldered very well, but hey, I, it's only a 6.5 Grindel. I got a break on it, and it stabilized against the pack. So. No big deal. So get out there and shoot some more. Go. Go. So one of the things that I noticed when I was about to move out is that I had the receiver up against this stick and it did not allow for ejection. And so if I would have needed a secondary shot on an animal or a hard target, then I would not have been able to make that shot. And so make sure your ejection port on a semi-auto is clear and that brass can eject so you can feed that next round. And so right now, I've got a, that silhouette that I've got out there. From here, it's at 300 yards. And so, let's see what the dope is for that. Calculate. 1.6 MRAD, so I'm going to hold 1.1 mil, or 1.5 mils rather, because I don't have 0.6, I only have 1, 1.52, and so on and so forth. Except I'm going to do it left-handed. I never shoot left-handed. And, uh, why not? Sorry, I thought somebody was driving up behind me. So, I'm shooting across an old abandoned road. So, um, be aware of where you're shooting and be cognizant of traffic and things like that. Uh, I've only ran into somebody once out here. Uh, this is kind of my spot. I don't know if I like declared it online and everybody stayed away or whatever, but whatever, it works. So, ejection port's clear. Woo! Super awkward angle. 1.5. So I adjusted my parallax to favor the reticle because I can see the 
the target clearly. Ejection port still clear? Good. And that was a hit, left-handed, the way I never shoot, and the brass fell at my lap is a sign. So um, practice those shots, you know? Right now, if I would have had a deer or an elk at 300 yards, animal of a lifetime, boom. I could have taken that shot and been comfortable with that and been confident. Of course, I need to practice more and I need to continue practicing. So let's take it back a little bit further. Um, I don't think I can go up the hill anymore. The trees are blocking my view, but let's see if we can find some awkward stuff to shoot from. All right, so we've come back quite a ways. Um, quite a ways, it's probably another 80 or 90 yards. And so I'm gonna laze my small target if I can. Some grass in front of me, so I gotta get around it. So I have targets at 315 and 372, if I held correctly. And so I have an eight inch target at 315. And so I'm gonna put that in here. And generally, I think I mentioned this earlier, but this would be on a dope card or something. They make things you can put inside your scope cap. Heck, you can put masking tape inside your scope cap, cut off the excess and write your, uh, your comfortable distances on here. Um, just a method I've seen a uh, parachute cord tied around with a really small card with that data on there. But uh, given that, I need to be at 1.8 MRAD, all right? And so I'm gonna hold two, but hold it just a tad low on the target um, because we are at 315 and I probably will go up to 16 power here. And so if you notice, I'm not saying you can't bring a shooting bag or something on your hunting trip. I don't, and I probably won't. Um, I may when I guide my daughter's first hunt and I'm teaching her how to use one right now. But for myself, I can generally shoot decently without one. But, you know, it's exercises like this that allow you to check that. So, <clears throat> find my target. Oh, right there, right in front of me. Make sure you're as level as possible. I like to load the bipod, a lot of people I don't know, it's kind of a mixed bag, but if I can't get a good load, I'll actually grab it and use that for stability. And I'm like digging in over here. So you gotta be prepared for all this stuff. And that was a hit. Um, like I said earlier, I'm so much more accustomed to this, um, this platform than a bolt action, even though I love bolt action. 370, I forgot what I said earlier about the distance. And so 370 equals out to two and a half mils. So we're gonna let this one rip and I'm not gonna support the front. I wanna see what happens. That's two hits in a row, no big deal. So I'm gonna police up my brass and I'm gonna see if we can find a spot even further back. Um, get some further shots. Uh, I think we might be able to get up to 415, 420-ish, which is, for me, beyond the hunting capability of the Grendel, depending on the bullet. Um, I know AccuBond uh, long range from Nos Nosler expands to 1300 feet per second, but you're really missing a lot on the foot-pounds of energy. I'm not a subscriber to the foot pounds theory. You don't actually transfer that energy. It's not like we're knocking the game animals over. However, I want as much power on that animal as I can. But with the 129 out of the uh, Nosler bullets, I'm well beyond a thousand foot pounds and well beyond the, foot, the feet per second requirement for expansion at 300 yards. And when I can follow up even faster than that, honestly, um, on a game animal, I know I can ethically take one at those distances. So let's get moved back and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so I was only able to get back to, let's see, 45, 365-ish from my, um, so not much further than my last shooting position. I'm just running out of terrain. I've got this big hill here. I've got big hills on the other side. But, you know, um, for hunting game, that ain't bad. And then to my silhouette, I'm at 
415. And so we're gonna give that a shot. So run the dope and I am off, off at a slant this way, but it's all good. So let's see here, 365-ish, calculate. So about two and a half mils. So, and then. So two and a half and then three to my long target. I'm gonna hit one and just go, uh, as soon as I know I got a hit, and I'm gonna go straight to the other one. And so again, utilizing the bipod as tension on this pack. Let's see if I can get a good sight picture here. I think I said two and a half. I'm not gonna check it. I'm just gonna go with it. Just over the top. So I am gonna check it. And I'm out of mags, or out of rounds in that mag, which great, great news, the bolt held open which tells me I was doing the right thing by changing out the, the trigger. And so I've got another mag right in here, somewhere. <laughs> All right. So, I held two and a half and I went over the top and it was a pretty solid shot. So I think I'm gonna hold two and a half on the bottom of the target and then we'll see what happens. Just over again. Now, if you're holding center target and you're over by four inches over a four, of an eight inch target, so you're in the half, and, you're, and you shoot over, so that's only four inches high, so I barely went over the top. Um, that's a kill shot on 99.9% .9 of big game animals. And so be okay with that, however, if you strive for perfection in training, you will be better in practical, in the practical, so. Hit, I actually held two underneath the target. So I do need to double check my feet per second. Evidently I'm going a little faster than I thought. So I'm gonna get another confirmation on that and then transition all the way over to the uh, silhouette at just over 400. Hit. Hit. Hope you heard that. I love that sound. That little one's not making a whole lot of noise, but I love the fact that I'm getting hits on it almost 400 yards and a gun I've not taken out this far yet other than on like a 20 inch target so put it on safe I want to fold these up shoot off the bag see if that changes anything hit hit Hit. Hit. Interesting. So I think my feet per second are off on my data. Um, I'm holding it two mils on that target when it calls for two and a half, and I'm holding it two and a half on the 415 yard target when it calls for three. So I need to play with my numbers just a little bit. And yeah, I need to get a chronograph so I can get actual facts instead of guesstimations. Um, I've always put it off because they're all oh, they're so expensive but it's invaluable. I've wasted tons of ammo trying to dial this stuff in and I could have saved all that, had better data, and been a better shooter all along. And so with that I'm gonna get some more shooting done and I hope you enjoyed all this today. Um, again like I can't stress this enough get out here get in the field I don't care if you live in Pennsylvania and you're just gonna shoot a shotgun slug at a deer at 60 yards. How much did you practice? Um, if you're in the western states, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, things like that, where two, 300 yards is not out of the question. Four, 500 yards is practical. 
you need to get out and practice that and you need to practice it in these weird positions, things like that. And so with that, I'm gonna get some more practice in and um, I hope you guys have a good day. Stay tactical.